I'm Michiel de Kok or Mitch. Um, I'm based in Joburg and in my day job, I work on a mobile app. Uh, today, I want to talk to you guys about pathfinding and this might be a weird topic, but I have found that a lot of people at BBD are interested in game development or even have degrees in it. Um, <laughs> um, so, and also we've got the game jam coming up, so maybe this could help up a couple of you in knowing where to start with pathfinding. Um, so I have, I know a lot of you will instantly think A star, and while that can be a part of it, it doesn't even have to be. I have, I want to dig a little bit deeper, and I made a little bit of a plan with four steps for setting up your pathfinding. We have to first define the terrain. Somehow your characters need to know how and where they can move. Um, we need some sort of data structure to define the traversable area for our characters. Then we can move on to the A star or whatever algorithm you want to use for finding the shortest path through this data structure. Um, moving on, uh, refining the path since the um, terrain can never be perfectly defined because that would just require memory and CPU usage we don't have access to. So we need to interpolate and refine the path to look a little bit more natural. And then finally, when we have this path, we need to steer our character and guide it toward from point A to point B. Um, so what does a traversable area look like? Um, it could be a square grid or even a hex grid. These are very similar and very simple to set up, but as every tile is a node that you need to loop over when finding your shortest path, uh, you can't scale these very big and therefore we're not going to be looking at those today. Then just to cover it, you could also use waypoints and for a simple game, that might just be enough. And I wouldn't recommend going too complex if that's all you need. So what are we going to look at then? The navigation mesh. Uh, a navigation mesh is an abstract data structure used to represent the accessibility of a space by storing it as a set of polygons. Um, so it's going to look a little bit something like this, where it generates triangles most of the time. It could be squares, but generally meshes are made out of triangles. Um, you're going to have vertices, edges, and then faces. Um, depending on how you actually use your um, navigation mesh, it is going to determine what these represent. Um, for today, I'm going to use the center points of the faces as the nodes we're going to use in our shortest path algorithm. Um, a navigation mesh, like the previous one, is very idealistic and probably not what it's going to look like. It's going to look a little bit more like this. Still the same concept, but all the triangles are not the same size, and it just tries to cover all the area, only putting the vertices on the edges where it's necessary. Um, some ways to generate a nav mesh is polygon trend, um, partitioning, marching squares or marching cubes, and then agent-based techniques. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into what these are because they are simple at the surface, but when you really want to get in and use them, they get quite complex. Um, and these days, all game engines, or pretty much all game engines, have some way of baking a nav mesh, and these are good enough. And unless you're making some weird characters running on the roof or something, it's probably not going to be necessary for you to look at this part. Now that we've got a, um, I seem to be missing a slide. <laughs> now that we've got our navigation mesh, we have to find the shortest path and some algorithms to get to do this is um, something as simple as breadth first search, which I'm sure everyone is familiar with. This is obviously not a very um, optimal search for finding the sh shortest path. Um, so 
in game development, we use more something like Deep Stress Algorithm or ASTAR or... Um, I've forgotten another one. Um, all of these are great to use and will depend on the scenario, which one you want to use, because depending on how your grid is laid out, uh, breadth first search might actually be more efficient, but most of the time you'll probably use something like ASTAR as it is very popular and you can find pseudocode for it even on Wikipedia. Um, I'm also not going to go into how that really works um, as time constraints, um, but I'll just say you've got two lists, an open and a closed list, and then you're just looping over this as long as there is nodes in the open list and you're using two variables, the distance to, for, to between your current position and the endpoint, and then a heuristic, which you can define however you want, if you want to add weights or however you want to use your algorithm, which is another reason to use ASTAR, it's very diverse. Um, and then you use this to calculate how desirable the next square should be. And eventually you've got yourself a path. Now, the path is not going to look ideal. Um, it might look something like this, where your character is not really moving exactly how you want it to. Uh, moving from point A to B, it might do some zigzags, backtrack just to follow the edges of the board with, with the nodes you've just um, calculated your path on. Um, and something we use for um, to mitigate this is a string pulling algorithm. Now, there's a couple of these, uh, such as line of sight or tangent bundle. Um, today, I will be just discussing how the stupid simple funnel algorithm works, just because it is stupid simple. Um, so what we do is we define three points, the center, which is where your character starts, which is the yellow on this slide. And then we've got a left and a right, which on the face that you've got your character standing on, you pick two of the points in the direction of your movement. Then you're simply going to walk along the path with the left and right leg and try and always decrease the angle of the, or your funnel. So every time we move these, it um, lowers the angle in the funnel, narrows it, and we just keep walking. And at this point, it would be the um, right side, the red one, to move. But since it would make it wider, we don't update its position. And then at some point, we're going to hit a corner, and our two legs are going to switch sides. And as soon as this happens, we know we've hit a corner, and we can move our um, center point. So we update our center point to where um, the corner was, where it intersected. And this, these centers, we can then create our new path, which will be a much more logical and natural path to follow. Um, and yeah, we just, as soon as we move our center, we start the algorithm again and continue until we've got a slightly better looking path. Um, from here, we need to move our um, characters along this path. And this is the part where there's the most freedom for you to do whatever you want and how you want to follow this path. And it very much is going to depend on how you want to implement it. Um, so I'm just going to discuss a simple one that I like to use, um, where you define three variables, a movement speed, a rotation speed, and a rotation uh, acceleration. Um, so you're just going to take your character and move it forward at a rate of your movement speed. And once it hits a corner, you update your next position um, from your path um, and you start rotating your character towards it. Now, not instantly snapping to the, um, to the next point's rotation uh, results in curving a little bit. And I find this to be a lot more natural and useful when working with uh, multiple um, agents on the same um, navigation. As they're all going to want to follow the same path, this can help a little bit in moving them and separating them. And then the rotation acceleration, what's that go what that's going to achieve for us is when 
since our speed doesn't reach or rotation speed doesn't reach top speed instantly, our um, agents will wobble along the path until it's stabilized. And depending on how fast you make this, it will wobble less. This kind of reminds me of a race car. If you're going around a track, that might be the um, type of movement you're looking for. But you can play with these variables and end up with something very diverse. Um, but again, there are many ways to implement this. So in conclusion, we've got the navigation navigatable area. We've got the shortest path algorithm and then our refining of this path and then steering it. The start of this list is a little bit more um, solid and you will be using um, other people's methods mostly. But as you get towards the later steps, you are going to want to experiment for the um, type of movement you want in your game. Oops. Thank you.